Please be seated. Hey, it's good to see everybody. Man, wasn't that a great, great program? Hey, Amen. Give the choir a hand again. Good job. And I would like to take just a moment and say to all of you who are serving or have served, thank you. From the bottom of my heart as your pastor, I want to say what an honor it is to get to, to serve you as pastor and know that all that you've gone through, and, and not just you, but your families. As I shared with you before, before I came to Lawton, I, I understood, or I thought I understood the sacrifice of the military because we, we were always talking about it and always up front with them. But the one group that I never really thought much about were their families until I came here to see what the sacrifices the families make, to see what they go through on a, on a daily basis without a loved one around for a year, a year or more at a time. And so to all the families, to you, thank you for what you go through, what you deal with. And again, it's an honor to serve you as, as pastor here at this church. And again, I pledge to you, my servanthood to you as well. Today, I want to share a quick message with you entitled, Call to Freedom. Because can I tell you this, my friends, each one of you here today, all of you watching on this live stream, God has called us to freedom. Amen? Now, that call to freedom is not that we're just, we're called, but it's an invite. It's inviting all of us to come to celebrate true freedom because we are a blessed nation, amen, to experience the freedom that we have. But I want to share with you, there's even a greater freedom that Jesus Christ has given us. And that is part of our celebration today, is that call to freedom. Because freedom, freedom's an amazing thing. And if you've ever been in a point where you don't have that freedom, you know what I'm talking about. And that's why even in this nation, it's the land of the free, and it should be celebrated, amen? Because freedom is, freedom is not given to everybody. And we, sometimes in our nation, if we're not careful, we will take advantage of it and lose the joy of it. And even as Christians, and that's where I'm coming from today, even as Christians, if we're not careful, we can begin to lose the idea of freedom. We can begin to lose the joy of it, the celebration of it. That's why we call it Celebrate Freedom, because we want to celebrate what we've been given. But friends, can I tell you, every single day in the life of a Christian should be celebration of freedom. Because we have been set free through Jesus Christ. And the call to you today is to celebrate that freedom. The call to you today, if you don't know Jesus, is to receive that freedom. So we are called to freedom. Christians are called to spiritual freedom. And I want to look today, if you will, at three ways, three lives that we can live as Christians if we're not careful. Two of them are not going to be great, but one of them is where Christ has called us to freedom. The first one is life of legalism. Inside the church, inside the Christian realm, this, is, this, this idea of legalistic mentality. In other words, it's living by a set of regulations of a lot of can't do this and can't do that. And, and it's just there and it's regulations. Can I tell you that not all the regulations, not all of the, the, the legalistic things that we do in the church are all scriptural. If we're not careful, we can take this beautiful freedom that Christ has given us, and we can begin to, if you will, put some man-made things into it. And then we can become legalistic about everything that we do. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 15, 9, it says, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine. In other words, not Baptist doctrine, not other denomination doctrine, but in New Testament scriptural doctrine. He said, they worship me with their their, their lips and it's in vain because they worship me teaching these, with these doctrines, the commandments of men. In other words, we take what we think, what we perceive, and we turn it into stuff that we say, okay, this is now what you are to do. And we begin to put a lot of restrictions. My friends, can I tell you today, we are free in Jesus. And if so many times in the church, if we're not careful, we will begin to put our ideas, our philosophies, our preferences into the Word and begin to teach it in the church as something from God when, listen to me, it was never breathed from the mouth of God. 
And so Paul is dealing, if you will, here with the Judaizers. So in, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, I want you to turn there very quickly. Paul is dealing with the, the Judaizers who are saying, okay, this idea of Jesus is, is good. It's kind of a neat thing, but I'm telling you there's something more to add to it. There's something more that you're missing that if you don't add this in, you're going to miss the mark. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. Let's go ahead if you're able to stand. Let's stand in honor of reading God's word. Verses 13 and 14. This is very important. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty, liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Father, thank you for freedom you've given us. Thank you for what we have as a nation, but even more importantly, what we have as, as your children, as Christians, to receive Jesus into our life. Father, guide us now through the rest of this time that we can Proceed from your word what you desire for us to be, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And in vain they worship me again, because if we begin to put legalistic mentality into the scripture, we're not truly worshiping. That's why he says that you must worship me in spirit, because there is no physical God that we put a manifestation up here on the stage and say, okay, this is the God you worship. He said, you must worship me in spirit, but then he doesn't say just that, but he adds another word and truth. Truth. Now, what does he mean by that? You worship me in spirit and truth. Well, truth is his word, not ourself, not our thoughts on it, not my preferences on it. It's what he wants. So I have to take his word. And if we're here today and we're going to worship God truly, we cannot come in here with our likes and our preferences. We can't come in here and decide, I didn't like how they did this. I can't believe they did that. And it just turned me off. Listen, my friend, that's not worshiping in truth. As a matter of fact, if that was your mentality coming to church today, if that was your mentality watching this service today, the Bible says you're worshiping in vain because it's not really worship because you ought to be experiencing the Holy Spirit and not the commandments of men, not what we think is right. So we see this, it's again, it's the can't do this and can't go there and can't wear this, can't see this. And and it's a lot of can'ts that we restrict people. And basically we call it, if you will, negative goodness. You're being good by not doing anything. And if you do these things, then you can't be good. Well, that's a negative goodness. It's only good if you're not doing something. If you're really, according to a legalist, if you're, not, if you're enjoying life, you're not serving Christ. you gotta be, you got to be walking around with a frown on your face, and you got to walk around as a sourpuss and tell everybody what they're doing wrong and how dare you, and if that were me, he said, that's in vain. So it's a negative thing. The second one is it opens up for pride. It opens up a place for pride. If we get legalistic in the church... Man, there's a a wide open ability for it to be about me and boy, how good I am and how you can't do this. And if if you do that, you're not like me and you're not like us and and we can't be together here. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Luke 18, 11, if you'll remember the story that Jesus is telling, he says the Pharisees stood and prayed and what did he say with them? Prayed thus with himself. Now, like, have you ever noticed that? The Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself. In other words, he was the only one talking And because of his heart, he was the only one listening. Amen? There's a whole lot of times, I think, in the church, if we're not careful, we can pray thus unto ourselves. But here's why he was praying thus unto himself, because it says, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. I thank you that I'm your gift to the world. I thank you that I'm your gift to you. You thought of yourself and needed something precious, and you made me. (laughs) Nothing else like me exists. Thank you. Thank you that I'm not like other men, like an extortioner. I I don't do that. I'm I'm not unjust. Or even, and he went to, and here's where we get in trouble with the church. He even started naming names. 
Amen? It, it, it would be like me sitting up here saying, let me tell you about, hmm, and picking you out and start saying, I'm glad I'm not like you because you are the worst. But so thank you that I'm not like that guy. And my friend, this is the legalistic mentality. And if we're not careful in the church, this is the way we can become. We can begin to quit worrying about saving or going out and presenting Jesus to save people. And we begin to judge them and thank God that we're not like them. And how dare we have anything to do with them. So we look and we see that it, t- it tends to make room for pride. But this is the life of legalism. Very quickly, the second one is the life of license. Now, let me tell you, this is the other extreme of freedom. This is the other extreme of living the Christian life. Then they're both not good. This idea of life of license is that other extreme. That, if you will, it's, a, it's, it's almost a perversion of liberty. It takes that which Christ gave us and it perverts it. And so this life of license, living any way we want, thinking there's no effect on our relationship with God. That I can do anything because nothing has an effect on me. We can live any way we want. We can talk any way we want. We can say anything we want. And we're warned against that because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 16, he says, act as free men. Absolutely. He says, hey, church, hey, choir, know you're, you know you're free. Act it. Act as free men. Church, act as free people. But not using that freedom as a covering for evil. But use it as a bond slave of God. Don't use it to say, well, I can do anything I want. There is a, there's a word antinomianism, and the, anti, anti, uh, the antinomianism is this. It's people who believe that grace releases us from obligation of observing moral law. I don't have to do anything because I am a Christian, and it releases me from that. And that, that, that is turning, if you will, an opportunity of our freedom into into the flesh in other words i i think i'm saved I, my spirit is good and since my spirit is good then man i can treat this body i can do anything with this body whatever it is i want to do because it has no effect on me it doesn't have any effect on my spirit because my spirit and my flesh are two separate things In other words, as we look here in verse 13, it says, do not use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, not taking it and using it for gross or corrupt passion. And this is where we get into it with Christians, is a lot of times we'll say, well, I can act in way I want. And my passions, they're my passions, and they're okay because me and God, man, I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I can treat people any way I want. I can spread rumors all I want. I can judge people all I want. And it really has no effect on me and God because me and God are okay. But this is, again, that life of license that, that, that we have perverted freedom to have this. It's not that way. As a matter of fact, in Romans six fifteen, Paul even asked this question. He says, what then? Shall we sin because we are under the law, but, but not under the law, but under grace? He says, certainly not. Now, a translation of that from Northeast Oklahoma, boy, like I am, that translation would read this. Can we go about and sin any way we want because we're under grace, not under the law? Are you seriously out of your cotton-picking mind? <laughs> Paul says, absolutely Not. You can't go out and continue to live your life any way you want and put a tag on it because I am free. My friends, can I tell you, a Christian cannot, 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 cannot live in sin. Now, we may fall into it. We may fall into sin. doesn't mean we can't sin because I'm here to tell you I'm pretty good at it. Amen? 
So I can tell you Christians can sin. And without naming names, I can tell you all that many of you are good at it. Oh, don't get mad at me. You know it's true. I just said I'm good at it too, so you're in good company. Amen? You're with the pastor. Amen? Hey, it's okay to say amen on that one. You're not going to hurt my feelings. There you go. There you go. But we can't use this because we are good at it, but we can't live in it. And can I tell you, a wise deacon one time, a wise deacon one time told me when I first started my ministry, he said, Pastor, let me tell you, there's a difference of sinning and living in sin. We're all going to sin, but my friends, if you can get into sin and you are knowing you're there and you're happy being there and you've been there and you don't ever plan on getting out, then can I tell you there's something spiritually wrong? As a matter of fact, J. Vernon McGee, an old preacher, one time put it this way. He said, you may fall into a pig pen, but you sure won't stay in it. We know the story of the prodigal son. He got in the pig pen. He was there, but then the Bible says while he was in that pig pen, the Bible says that he came to himself. In other words, he looked around, he realized what was going on, where he was, and he shouldn't be there, and he said, I can't stay here. My friend, that's the way a Christian is going to do. The Holy Spirit of God living that lives in us. Remember, when I receive Jesus as my Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in me. And that Holy Spirit is going to talk to me. That Holy Spirit is going to make it to where I can't continue to do this. It's going to be on my mind. And I, I may, I may burn, it may burn inside of me, as I shared with you last week. It may burn inside of us. And eventually, we're going to come to ourselves. We're going to get out of that pig pen. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God won't let me stay there. Because, my friends, can I tell you, you have not been given a life of license as a Christian. The Holy Spirit of God will speak to you the truth, and he will draw you with the truth into where he wants you to be. So that's another perversion. Again, you may fall into a pig pen, but you won't stay there. Very quickly, the last one is where God really wants us. That's what we're called to. Amen? We're called to a life of liberty. Now, that's freedom from the condemnation of sin. That's not the freedom to sin and not free from the consequences of sin. Because here's where I think we get it mixed up. And here's where sometimes and I think as Baptists, we kind of, uh, people kind of attack us because I'll be honest with you, can I tell you, I'm going to make a public profession here to all of you, to all of you, to all of you. I believe in eternal, eternal security of a believer. Oh, now folks, I should have gotten a little more than that. I'm saying, yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Out of the mouth of a child. Let me say that again. Not as a Baptist, all right? Get that out of here. But as, as a Christian, from the Word of God, I believe. Here's your cue. I believe in eternal security of a believer. Amen. There you go. Yeah, that did, give a hand. You know why I believe it? Because salvation wasn't anything I earned. It was given to me. If I don't earn it, I can't keep it. Because if I, listen to me, if I was good enough to keep it, I would have been good enough to earn it. But I can't. All I do is receive it as a gift. And God holds me into his hand. And never to let go of me. So I believe in that. But I believe that there are consequences of my sin, even as a believer. Amen? There is now therefore no condemnation, but I believe there's consequences of sin. And we think we're a void of that. We, we don't have to worry about consequences. No, absolutely not. I'm not condemned for my sin but folks, listen to me. I will suffer for my sin. My family will suffer because of my sin. The church will suffer because of my sin. People that I care for will suffer because of my sin. So there are absolutely consequences of your sin. So be, be sure of that. 
I want to close out very quickly here. What it means. I found this in, in an article that I read the last couple of weeks from Glenn uh, Gesselbach. And, and what he wrote was basically three, three things that it means to have freedom in Christ, to have liberty. One is seeing things clearly. When I receive Christ and I am set free, I will then have the ability to see things more clearly than I've ever seen them before. In other words, the Holy Spirit will open my eyes and I will begin to see things as God sees them. I will begin to see his word as he writes it. I will begin to see people as he sees people. I will even begin to see the lost world as Jesus sees the lost world. And he doesn't see the lost world as something that he wants to condemn. He sees the lost world as something he wants to save. I'll see things more clearly. As a matter of fact, I've shared with you so many times before, the closer I am to God in his word and his spirit is working deeper in me, the less sense the world is going to make. The world can't make sense to those who are close to Christ. It can't make sense because it, it doesn't fit in his word. But I'll see things clearly. I'll be able to understand things more. I'll see sin as sin. I'll see God's word as life. The second one is knowing what Christ has done for us. Freedom means that I understand that I didn't do this. This basically says that our call to freedom was not free. When I receive Christ in my heart, what it means to live a life of liberty is that I'm going to realize, man, I had nothing to do with my salvation other than receiving it in and, and realizing I'm lost and I need Jesus. And that's it. And I realize that and I see that. And, and you know what happens to me? Whenever that happens, is I, can, I celebrate my freedom. Oh, because I know what he did. I know, I know it wasn't, listen, I know it wasn't that God just said, Harold Gacious, in 1981, at Shelter First Baptist Church, I speak to you, and I speak freedom to you. I speak salvation to you. I give salvation to you. That wasn't how it worked. How it worked was over 2,000 years ago, his son came and he lived on this earth. He was born of a virgin in Bethlehem. He lived and was, uh, lived a perfect life. And then on, on, when the time was right, that he hung on the cross for us. He died a tragic death, suffering on the cross for us. And I know that on that moment... When the world, the clouds grew dark and, and the sun was hid away, I know that Jesus took all the sins of the world and it brought it upon himself. And through that, he died and, and he, he became my sin and he became your sin. And we became his righteousness when we received it. And I know that he died on that cross. I know that he was buried in the tomb. I know that three days later, he rose again. I know that he taught and walked amongst the men and all of his disciples. And I know that he ascended into heaven. And I know that one day, that Jesus is coming again. I know that. I see that. And folks, I know he, he didn't just speak it. Man, Christ died for my freedom. He died for it. And we need to know that. We need to understand that. And lastly, we, it means to be free Christ that we love and obey him. I don't do it because I have to. I don't do it because he makes me. Man, I do it because I love him. I know what he did for me, and I, I, I want to obey his word. I know that. Folks, it's, it's kind of like my, my family. I, I, want, I want my family to be taken care of. I want my family to, to be provided for. I want my family to be doing great. Not, and and I, I give to my family. Man, I, I strive for my family. You talk to my girls and they tell you I spoil them silly and that's okay. And I don't do it because I'm obligated. Well, that's my, i got to get up and go to work for my girls and for my wife. I'm obligated to take good care of them. No, I do it because I love them with all my heart. 
And I want, us, I want them to be good. Folks, can I tell you, when we, when we are celebrating a life of liberty, what it means is I'll, I love God. I love God because I know what he did for me. And I'm connected to him. And I'm close to him. I, I walk daily with him. And because of that, I, I just want to obey him. I'm not by law restricted to that. But man, I, I, want, to, I want to do good by him. I want, I want to know that he is looking at me and going, yeah, that's my kid. That's my kid. I, I, I want this sermon to be a good one. Not because all of y'all, I hope you all will like it. But I really want at the end of this, I want God to say, poor Harold, you knocked it out of the park. They didn't get it. They didn't laugh. They didn't, they didn't. But amen, you did it. You're my boy. Folks, that's, that's what liberty is, amen? No obligation, but it's also not license. It's just people who realize what Christ has done for us. And I love him for it. I want to serve him. And as I serve him, I want to love people. Hey, isn't that our, 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 our vision statement? Love God. Love people. And as a result of us being obedient to do those things, we are going to see lives changed. Amen? You've been called unto liberty. Conduct yourself in that way. And the way we do that, first and foremost, is that we receive Jesus into our hearts. So if you're here today or you're watching this program and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you are not free. You may be thinking you're doing fine and everything is great, but you are not free because you cannot be free from any by any means except jesus so i want to encourage you today if you're feeling that there's emptiness and there's something missing in your life can i call ask you to call upon the name of jesus and be saved today receive him into your life you can do that right here right now you can do it at home wherever you are you can do it receive jesus and maybe you're here today and you you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I've gotten so caught up in this life of freedom, this life of just license in my life. I've just been going out doing everything. And I, I thought it's okay with me and God, but boy, it's something in my spirit is speaking to me now. And I need to recommit my life to just serving him. Or maybe I've gotten judgmental and I've gotten this life of... Uh, of the idea of basically having this life of legalism and man i'm so wrapped up in stuff and it makes me mad and i can't see this i can't enjoy this i can't enjoy my sunday school i can't enjoy my small group i can't enjoy worship because they're not doing it the way and just boy something's just messed up in me i want to be free pastor you can be free today to celebrate freedom i'd like you to bow your head as we get ready to to wrap this thing up man do you know jesus Ah, oh, do you know him? Oh, my friend, if you don't, would you, would you call upon his name right now? You don't need me. You don't need to come down front. But, man, you can do it right there where you are. Would you just call upon Jesus? Say, God, I know I need you. I've tried it for so long apart from you, but today I come to you. I want to receive you into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I claim Jesus as the true sacrifice, the only way to heaven, and I receive him into my life, God, forgive me. Would you call on that? Would you do that today, right now? Again, if you're here and you've gone to those either extremes of this Christian life that God has given us, and you sense that legalistic mentality, and you know it's hardened your heart, you know you haven't felt obedient. You've felt obligated, but I don't want to do that anymore. God, I want to be free. Free my heart from legalistic ideas. Or maybe you're on the other end and you say, man, I've been, I realize today, man, my life does not look sound in any way different than the world. 
But today, I want to get out of that pig pen. I've been in it far too long. I want out today. Thank you, God, for speaking that truth to my heart. Thank you, God. My friend, would you pray that this morning? And then we want to celebrate freedom. In just a second, we're going to ask you to stand. We're going to sing. I'll be down front if you, if you need to come. If you're at home, you call the church. Someone will be there to listen, visit with you, pray with you, whatever you can need. Father, hear our prayer today as we speak. Speak to you, Lord, through our spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we join back?